Welcome to Supernatural Life. My name is Patricia King, and I'm serving you as your host today for um, a very, actually controversial subject. You've probably for sure read about apostles in the Bible, but our apostles for today, do we have them living on the earth right here, right now? And we're going to discuss this with a, a very special friend of mine, Che An. And Che, you are an apostle of apostles, and you and your wife Sue, of course, uh, planted uh, HROC Church in Pasadena, that you um, oversee the HIM network, which is a network of apostles, prophets, and fivefold ministers worldwide that hit the marketplace and all kinds of realms of influence. So uh, you have written a book. And I love this book called Modern Day Apostles. And I just want to say, I want every single one of you to get this book and tell your friends to get this book because it is so needed. And I, I believe in, I've shared this with you before, that I think this, this book was written for such a time as this and it should be in everyone's library. Well, thank you for having me on the show. And what a privilege it is to be here and to hang out with you. Yeah. And to really just share... Uh, a tremendous truth that's been sort of hidden over the years with the body of Christ, especially leaders in the body right. of Christ. Right. So, so, Che, first of all, let's uh, define what an apostle is. Some of our viewers might not understand what is an apostle and what makes an apostle different from, like, a prophet or a pastor, evangelist. Well, that's a really good question because the word apostle or apostles appears 82 times in the New Testament. So it's everywhere. Uh, which is really interesting, the word pastor, and we build our whole church government around the pastor, that Greek word poimen only appears one time in Ephesians 4.11. Now, there are other synonyms for pastors like elders or bishops or overseers that's used interchangeably with pastor. But even if you add all the synonyms together, it would be 67 times. Uh -huh. So the overwhelming emphasis in the New Testament as far as the Ephesians 4.11 ministry is apostles. So Ephesians 4.11 says that when he ascended, he gave some to be apostles. And by the way, some, not everyone. Right. <laughs> some to be prophets, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists, uh, some to be teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And I like what it says, the rest of uh, uh, verse 12, 13, right. etc., because it says, until we come to the unity of faith, right. until a mature man, yeah, full to the fullness of, of the measure of Christ. And we're not there yet. We're yeah. not united. Yeah. Until then, we are still going to need apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And I think that, uh, to be honest, I think the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry is absolutely crucial to fulfilling the great commission that God's given to us. And that's why I think we're, we just have not finished the job. And what I mean by the great commission, I'm not talking about just winning souls because you have the evangelists doing that and people are doing a great job reaching out to see people get saved globally. But when I talk about the great commission, I'm talking about what Jesus said in Matthew 28, beginning with verse 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Yeah. And that apostolic authority is absolutely crucial to fulfill the next part, right. to make disciples of nations. Right. And what's really interesting, Patricia, you didn't say make disciples in nations, but disciple nations. nations and yeah. that's where the apostolic comes in. Oh, that's so good. Now, Che, you mentioned uh, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, which uh, often is referred to as the fivefold ministry. Right. And I love the scripture you highlighted in Ephesians where it says that those ministry gifts which are just some of the body, right. are set in place by God for the equipping of the saints. In other words, every believer needs to be equipped. So an apostle then would equip the whole body on being apostolic. Yeah. Because even though I'm, uh, you know, I might not be apostle, you might not be apostle, but we're all to be apostolic. Right. Every believer should be evangelistic, every believer should be prophetic, every exactly. believer should be able to unpack the scriptures yeah. and, and, and give account for what we read there. So, And everyone should be pastoral. So that is the job of the fivefold ministry gifts. But the question I think uh, that people will be asking is, what does it mean to be apostolic then? Because right. we know we're to be prophetic. Yeah. Because the Bible says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. So if you're a sheep, you're going to hear the voice of God. Right. And, of course, everything's based on the Word of God. And, of course, we're to share our faith, whether we're to be uh, an evangelist like Reinhard Bonnke. It's amazing that we're right here and there is uh, his uh, base. But 
Uh, <clears throat> but what does it mean to, to be apostolic? And I think that's why I think it's important to look at Luke chapter uh, 6, verse 13. Why did Jesus call them apostles? Mm -hmm. Because he spends all night in prayer. In verse 12, comes down from the mountain. And among the thousands of disciples, he picks 12 and calls them apostles, which is uh, the, literally apostolos means send out one. So he's right. ready to send them out. But to do what? And so I think it's important to know uh, the Roman culture at that time, because, you know, one thing I learned in seminary is that when you try to exegete a passage, you have to understand the cultural background, the historical background. And so you do it in context to that culture. And the Romans used the word apostle. They had apostles. In fact, the Jewish people were offended by the apostles because they were either generals, uh, admirals, if it was a coastal city, or a governor. And their job was to enforce Roman law, Roman culture, and to inculcate Roman culture to the conquered territory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, whether they liked it or not, they had to pay the taxes, et cetera. So what Jesus is saying, I also have a kingdom, mm -hmm. and I also have a kingdom culture. It's not like the Roman culture. It's an upside-down kingdom, actually. Right. Uh, it's a culture of love. It's a culture of service. Yes. And, uh, but I want you to inculcate this to the nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded right. you. Because anything that comes from the heart of God um, is, is an eternal reality. And so people who don't know the Lord will pick up on the principle of that even without understanding it because God created it. It's his order. Exactly. And so even in the world, we see the order right. of not what the world would call apostles, but they're there. Yeah, they right? are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But um, but the difference, though, and I think this is where Jesus teaches in Matthew 20, you know, the, the rulers of this world, talking about the Romans, lord over the people. Right. But not so but with not you. not so with us. With right. us, we're to be. And that's why Paul begins yeah. all his letters, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. So for those who have this idea that an apostle is some big shot, calling the shots right. and authoritative right. and controlling, that's nonsense. That's not right. the kingdom way. It's servant leadership and to be like Christ wow. and to be like Jesus. All of what you've just mentioned and more, of course, is in your book, and I highly recommend all of you getting this book because we do need to give account for what we believe in, for what the Lord is doing in any particular uh, hour. We don't want to be ignorant concerning yeah. Yeah. his flow. And, you know, Che, as I was a young believer, you know, I was very childlike. To this day, I'm very childlike. And I would read the Bible and just believe it, of sure. course, yeah. right? And so apostles, that, that wasn't an issue to me. You know, I might not have understood at that time what it all meant, but, uh, you know, I realized, according to Ephesians 4, that they're set in the church. So when God started highlighting the apostolic ministry, it was like, yay, this is awesome. But just recently, I was hit with such great opposition mm -hmm. uh, from believers who said, this is not for today. It is absolutely demonic if you believe that apostles are for today. In fact, if you believe that, you're being heretical. And if you're sharing it with others, you're just causing trouble and deception to the body. And I was like, whoa, you know, this is a shock. But there is a lot of that out there. And as viewers, you might have... Um, experience that too with people saying, no, apostles are not for today, but they are, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think the reaction is, uh, there, to, to me, there are two reasons for it. Number one is that during the Reformation in uh, 1517, uh, the church believed in apostles, the Roman Catholic Church believed in apostles, and of course the Pope was the apostolic successor to Peter. And uh, for, they also had a doctrine called the infallibility of the Pope, that whatever he heard from God, it was like the word of God. And of course, uh, and I'm glad Martin Luther came on the scene and said nonsense. He said, uh, sola scriptura, you know, it's just only scripture. And so we have to hear from God from the word of God. Now you and I know that that's the foundation of even the prophetic, but God does speak. But at that time there was just a reaction to the infallibility of the Pope. And so the reformers went to the other extreme. They said, there's no apostles. The Pope is not an apostle. It's only priests. We're all priesthood. Uh, the priesthood of believers, we're all priests. And that became one of the major tenets of the, uh, the Reformation. And it's true. We're all priests. You know, Revelation 1, 6 says we're kings and priests. And I love 1 Peter 2, 9, that we are royal sure. priesthood. But 
obviously, the Bible says that he gave to the church apostles. And we see a number of apostles. Now, let me just say that Peter and the 12 will hold a special place. They're called the apostles of the Lamb, historically. Right. So no one's going to replace them. Sure. Right? But he's given apostles. I mean, you have James, the brother of Jesus, who was not, he didn't even believe in Jesus. It says <laughs> right. in John 7, uh, during his ministry time, he became the main apostle. Uh, by Acts 15, he's running uh, basically the apostolic center in Jerusalem. And of course, Apostle Paul. And then you have others like Timothy and Silas become apostles. And then there are obscure names like Adronicus and Junius in Romans chapter 16, right. who are apostles before Paul, he said. Right. Before he became apostle. There's just apostles, apostles all over the they place. all over. In <laughs> fact, there were so many false apostles. You know, Revelation chapter 2, it says that, I know your deeds, your hard work, you persevered, you've tested those who are false apostles, and they were false. And so that's good. To, that is to, good. Yeah. We, but, we need discernment. The other side of the coin is that there are false apostles, there are a lot of true apostles. <laughs> right, So exactly. there are a lot of apostles during the time, New Testament period. Oh, it's so good. Wow. You're probably, you know, just eating up every word of this, and you should be because it's really, really powerful. It's what God is speaking to the church today, and God has an invitation for you to be anointed apostolically so that you can move in apostolic gifts, apostolic anointing. Uh, the whole body is to be apostolic in this hour, and we're going to talk about how that looks like for today. What does it look like to operate in that right after this break? Welcome back to this wonderful discussion about the apostolic today. It's almost like we're all sitting around together in a living room, um, listening to the wisdom that Che is bringing to us on this subject. So Che, what does like an apostolic person look like today? Like um, if I wanted to be apostolic, but I'm not an apostle, let's say, right. but I want to be apostolic, what would that look like? Well, we talked about apostles bringing a kingdom culture to society and all of us uh, can do that. And to me, what does kingdom culture look like? And to me, it looks like heaven. And so Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 9, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy yeah. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, on earth, earth as it is in he heaven. So, so immediately after Jesus comes on the scene in Matthew chapter 4, 17, he says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He begins to heal the sick in verse 23, right. a few verses afterwards, heals every sickness. And by the way, that's not just a, um, you know, hyperbole, just a general exaggeration that everyone got sick. I mean, everyone got healed, right. not sick, but everyone got healed. And the reason why, because there's no 50% uh, healed in heaven, 50% or not. Right. Everyone is healthy in and that heaven. should be our goal. And that here. should be yeah. that's God's will on yeah. earth as it is in heaven. So we can pray for the sick, we can minister deliverance. But I want to take a step further. I, I believe there's no injustice in heaven. That's so, good. Yeah, so on earth as it is in heaven. So we're to make right everything that's wrong in society. So I don't know why beautiful. I'm emotional about that, but um, I think it's a jet lag. I just flew in from England and <laughs> so a little bit. Well, oh, there's away. so much injustice today, yeah. and I yeah. think that your spirit's connecting with that, and yeah. the church has to rise up. Like we have, we need so much voice, and if it doesn't carry apostolic yeah. weight, we're not going to be able to yeah. see the shifts take place. Like yeah. you know, there's issues with um, you know sex trafficking, with abortion, right. with with um, same-sex marriage, with all kinds of different. Right issues with this, hurting people, that right. the church needs to have a voice in this. Absolutely. And, um, you know, racism, there's no racism. In right. But justice, I think, is really, really important because, you know, at Micah 6, 8, he's shown us what to do, to love justice, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly uh, with the Lord. And so we're to do, so everyone can do that. I, I think the misnomer about being apostolic, I was looking over Peter Wagner's uh, first edition of Spiritual Gifts Can Help Your Church to Grow. So he lists the apostle as a missionary church planter. And so most people will say, I'm not a missionary. I don't feel called to be in the mission right. field. I mean, we should all be involved in some capacity, but we don't feel called to that, and I don't feel called to be a church planter. And so if you think that's what apostolic is, which is the traditional way sure. of Sure, then, then you disqualify yourself yeah, right yeah, away. Well, that's not me, but we can all bring heaven's culture around right. our world. It's and so to bring good. about 
righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, Romans 14, 17. And another thing, like Jesus um, uh, commissioned and assigned his apostolic team. In fact, he called them apostles in Matthew 10 and said, you preach the gospel, you heal the sick, you raise the dead, you cleanse the lepers, you cast out devils. Like, like you go in the full authority of Jesus Christ and, and go and manifest these things. And I think that for, for years, decades, maybe centuries, that the church has been comfortable sitting in pews, letting a professional pastor or whatever, lead them on a Sunday morning, but not realizing their apostolic role in going out and finding sick people and healing them, right. finding bound people right. and setting them free. Uh, Jesus said in, in, in Luke 4, 18, he said, the spirit of the mm -hmm. Lord God is upon me. And it was for a purpose. Right. He's right? him to preach good news to the poor. And I think uh, that's really, really, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up because Paul talks about in Romans 1, I quoted Romans 1, 1 earlier, I just said, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, and then he says, set apart for the gospel. And so he's set apart for the good news of the kingdom. And this is really important that people understand, it doesn't say gospel of salvation, but the gospel of the kingdom. Of the, the kingdom, good news yeah. Of the kingdom, which of course encompasses that Jesus died for our sins, according to scripture, he rose from the dead, according to scripture, but he's also seated at the right hand of of God, the Father, and He is King. He is ruling not just yeah. over Israel, but over, and not just over the church, right. but He's ruling over nations. Right. And and uh, His kingdom is coming, and that is good news. That and His kingdom's an everlasting kingdom, it and is. we're a part of it, and we're separated from the world at system in that sense, right. because we are a peculiar yeah. people. We are a people set apart for God and his purposes. Well, you know, it's important that people understand that Jesus said, my kingdom's not from this world. Right. And that's also been misinterpreted and translated in John 18, because they, you say, they say the kingdom is not of this world, but that word ek means from this world, but it is for this world. Right. You know, in other words, this kingdom is not this metaphysical exactly. substance. You know, yeah. it's eternal, yeah. uh, but it is for this world. And Jesus said, you are in the world. That's important yeah. that we yeah. understand <laughs> that because we need to have influence in the world, but we are not of that. We're not of that same heart. Well, We're one different. of the major problems, and this is the thing that I, you know, as a pastor now for 40 plus years, is the fighting that whole platonic Greek mentality of dualism it's like, you know, we just have this escape mentality, just get us out of here. Right. Everything's going to get worse and worse and just, you know, can't wait for the rapture, which, you know, uh, it, to me, it's not biblical to think that way. Right. The, the Bible says God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth when he does come back. Right. But he wants us to occupy until yeah. he comes back. He wants us to disciple nations. Yeah. He wants us to be salt and light and bring transformation. Yeah. Because this is his creation and he created it and said, it is good. Right. And then when he created you and me, he says, very good. So, yeah, that's so, awesome. <laughs> in, in fact, um, the beauty of apostolic authority, when it's exercised, it actually brings shifts. It brings light into the darkness. It creates those things that are not, you know, it, it's like bringing forth the kingdom. And that's the beauty of the apostolic authority that every believer has that apostolic oil in them. Yes. Um, and, and if we would all exercise it, we wouldn't say, oh, I need to escape the darkness. Everything's going to get worse and worse. But we would know, no, we are here to make sure heaven comes to earth. Jesus' Amen. prayer and the way he taught us prayer is going to be answered fully. <laughs> We've been praying right? it for 2,000 years. But I don't <laughs> think people fully understand what they're praying. Right. That he is serious about his right. kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. But you said something that uh, a number of times you talk about apostolic authority. And I think this is very important because... You know, you had talked, and we're just talking in the green room, what distinguishes an apostle from a prophet and from the other fivefold ministries. And uh, the one thing I want to just say is that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, he says, first apostles, second prophet, uh, third teachers. And Paul uses very strong Greek words, proton, deuteron, and triton. And when he says first, it's not first that we're better than anyone else. We're all equal before God, but it's first in authority. That God has given authority to the apostles. That's why in, in Matthew 28, he takes the 12, uh, minus Judas, of course, back to Galilee, to the mountain, where I think he gave the Sermon on the Mount. It's not in Jerusalem. 
But he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, implying that I'm giving you now this authority to disciple nations. Wow. So apostles have an extraordinary authority. And that, this is why it's so important for us to recognize apostles in the body of Christ, because we used to say, if we just gather the pastors together and pray together, we'll say revival. We need okay. unity, and we do need unity. But... I just want to submit that pastors are not the highest authority in the body of right. Christ. So if we can gather apostles together, if right. they can come together and unite and pray, they could shift things uh, yes. that could really change history. And that's why I'm so excited about the apostolic ministry and right. the restoration of that in order to see God's purposes and, come. And what you've done with launching HIM uh, network. It is an apostolic network where you gather apostles from all over the world and every realm of influence. You've got marketplace apostles, yes. uh, apostles in the arts and entertainment, media, uh, education, yeah. government, you know, and I just want to thank you so much, Che, for the way that you are modeling that bringing together of the apostolic voice and empowering mm -hmm. them. And uh, we haven't touched on this in the program, but you empower uh, women apostles too. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that is biblical. There are women apostles in the Bible and they are um, being anointed by God today. So thank you so much oh, for your ministry you. to, yeah. to the body. We're going to take a break right now at God TV. We are committed to your growth in the spirit and we have many e-courses that will help you get equipped to be an able minister of the gospel and touch the world that you live in with the life of Jesus. So we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. We are uh, featuring Che An, an apostle and the author of Modern Day Apostles. And I, again, want to say to you, just get this book. You can go on Amazon or go to Che's site. Uh, I mean, it's all over. It's in bookstores all over. So make sure that you get that book and study it out because we need to give account for what we believe. And this is such a, a, a great book. It's a great tool. Oh, thank you. But Che, um, you are an apostle called by God, a recognized apostle in the body of Christ. You're an apostle of apostles. And I was wondering if I could ask you to pray an apostolic blessing over our Absolutely, viewers yeah. and, and maybe ignite the apostolic in them. Amen. Let me just pray. Father, for those who are watching, I just pray for an impartation that we would, as the body of Christ, be all apostolic, that we would take the Great Commission seriously of discipling nations and that we would bring heaven's culture, your kingdom culture, in our sphere of influence, in our little world. And so I pray for that impartation, but I pray specifically for an impartation of uh, for those who are called to be apostles, whether in the marketplace or in the church. I pray for that uh, supernatural grace to manifest of the Ephesians 4.11 that he gave some to be apostles. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Lord, I pray for increase of spiritual authority, that, Lord, that you defeated the enemy on the cross 2,000 years ago, and your word says all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And, Lord, we're seated with you in the heavenly places, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion. So I pray for the revelation of our authority and then a greater increase of authority uh, in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. That was so powerful. And just receive that, receive the infusion. I want to just share for a moment with you from my heart because God TV is an apostolic ministry, an apostolic ministry that, that God has called carrying the prophetic, carrying miracle signs and wonders, an invitation to live a supernatural life and for the true advancement of the kingdom of God worldwide. And we're asking for your prayers. We're living in a day and hour where we need to take our place in the airwaves more than ever before. That we need to take that position to resist darkness and to infuse the world with God's light and life. And you and I are a part of making that happen. We have been brought into the world for such a time as this. And so I would ask you to pray about being a partner, a media missionary with God TV so that we can continue the outreach and continue to establish his kingdom. Or maybe you'd like to give a gift, a generous gift for the advancement of the kingdom. 
or you could pray for us and just pray for the open doors and the open airwaves that we can release the power of God in this hour. Thank you so much for joining us on today's program. It's been a delight to have you. And God has called us all to live a supernatural life because we're not normal, ordinary people. We're supernatural beings. And so you go and enjoy living that supernatural life and we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony or prayer request today or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv forward slash Patricia and join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.